everyone and welcome back to our lecture on supply chain management so now in the following three videos we are going to be discussing about quality management so this is uh, probably the longest lecture in our course so we have a total of 10 lectures but in the quality lecture we have to break down our videos into three so there will be part one part two and part three so now you are going to be viewing part one of the lecture on quality management so in the last lecture we discussed about uh, learning capability in terms of a single loop double loop learning and how and the ways we can use learning to improve the systems of a supply chain management so i hope you guys have a better idea of the capability in terms of a management capability and learning capability in supply chain management if you recall in lecture two we actually discussed about management capability in terms of controllability flexibility and how should we manage our participants in the supply chain to optimize our outcome and i hope you guys um, have some of your own ideas following from the lectures um, and you should try to see if they work in real life by your future um, jobs in your future job okay so now we're actually getting to a really important topic in supply chain management that is a quality management so first of all let's recall what we learned from lecture one the um formula for value equals to utility divided by cost so utility is basically the customer's satisfaction on your product it's, it's about how satisfied are your customers on your product and the quality basically relates to utility because how customer satisfies on your products are basically linked to quality a lot of them is basically linked to quality i would say when a customer believes the quality of the product or service is really high she will feel satisfied or happy so what are the elements of quality? Is it a one-dimensional concept or is it a multi-dimensional concept? The answer is quality definitely a multiple-dimensional concept. It cannot be only determined by one factual element, but it's actually a combination of different elements. So first of all, now let's get to the eight dimensions of quality proposed by Garvin in 1988. So the first dimension of quality is really straightforward. It is basically the conformance. And it is about how good are your product meeting your specifications, sorry, meeting your customer specifications in the market. It is really important if your product meets the specification because this is actually the basic um, quality requirement for business, for the consumers in the market. And this is what business at least have to achieve in order to be successful in terms of the utility of the product. So conformance basically meeting about the specifications. Although you might say that um, specifications are only set by the company in terms of what colors of my product, what are the functions, but actually conformance in this case actually means how conforming is your product to your customers. When they buy your product, they buy because they want to wanted to have certain requirements. And these requirements are basically the conf um, um, relates to the conformance. How good is your product? Um, satisfying the needs and wants of your customers are basically how good is your product at conforming the specification given by the customers. And the second uh, dimension is performance. It is really about the function of your um, product. How functional is your product? Does your product meet the functions, de um, functions desired, wanted by your customers? So function is definitely a key in determining whether your product has a good utility or not. And the third dimension is reliability. How reliable is this product? Even if it has functions, even if it meets certain specification, am I able to use it for, am I able to use it in certain circumstances? For example, with a luxury bag, if, a, uh, if it's a luxury bag, I, of course the consumers expect not to only use the bag at work. If they go on a holiday, they expect your bag to be reliable, to be performing well, to be able to be kind of a, um, to be um, to be kind of a perseverant it's not going to break so it's really important to have a reliable product that can be applied in multiple circumstances that potentially the customer may use just like the luxury bag although you may say it's used for kind of uh, events used for weddings but if a person buys your luxury bag it's really likely that the person is going to use your bag in many circumstances like sending the children to work or sort of sending the children to school going to work maybe go for a mountain hiking going to for a vacation going to different transportations so you have to make sure your product is reliable in, cer um, in many circumstances and this leads to our next dimension that is durability durability is really important because this is linked to how long is your product life of your product for example a car people buy a car which expects at least to drive for like five to ten years um, without major issues that 
um, they have to, um, they're forcing to change a new car because durability is really a key determinant of uh, quality. It really, um, it is really determining why, um, what the customers will find your product cost effective because if they spend a lot of money just to buy a product that's going, going only, only going to be taking effect for one year, they're not going to go into spend money on a product because it's not really cost effective. They want to buy a car that can last about 10 years. Even for a bag, even if you know your customer may be really unlikely to use a bag for 10 years, but you have to be prepared for that. Otherwise, if your bag breaks down in, for example, seven years, eight years, if the customers are still using your bag, then you're actually damaging the reputation of your company and the customer loyalty may break down and you may just die out and lose to the major competitors in the market. So definitely durability is a key determinant of the quality of your product. And next is about features. So features will have a different definitions on what we call as a feature, but now in the quality dimension kind of uh, proposed by Garvin in 1986, um, features um, basically mean the supplementary features, supplementary functions. So it's out of the features, it is not belong to those functions that are required by the customer or a prereq or a kind of common sense required by the customers, but they are kind of a supplementary extra functions. Maybe they, um, they can get sales for you, get extra sales for you in front of the customers. So they are not really like a first time requirement, but it really depends on definition. For example, some um, we may address the Huawei or Apple camera as a feature because it may have some extra feature, but you know in the smartphone world, camera is a requirement. So in terms of whether the feature is supplementary or, or is a requirement really depends on your industry. For example, if you take your phone, the camera is definitely a requirement already. It's not a supplementary feature. And for example, the application, I would say, must be a requirement as well in this competitive world um, between Samsung, between Apple, between Huawei, because um, now we cannot regard some apps to be um, some apps to just be uh, features, be supplementary, extra mark gaining softwares, but sometimes they are just requirements that customers must have in order for them to be convinced to buy your phone. But however, it really features can depend on these camera features. Because although camera is a requirement for all smartphones, different companies may release different levels of the advanced innovative features on the smartphone, on the camera. For example, Apple iPhone was able to detect the calories of a food when you take a photo. So if you take photo for an Apple, the Apple will automatically state the calories. So as a person who is a strong carer, um, or who is aware of his own diet, her own diet, it may be a really supplementary function for those maybe middle class to high class customers because they want to able to find out how much calories they eat every day as a kind of a boosting a healthy lifestyle. So this is considered the feature because only iPhone has developed this currently so far. I don't think Samsung and Huawei have it on their default camera setting. So this is basically the definition of a feature, but it really depends on how you're going to define this word. And next up is serviceability. It is about maintenance and repairability of your product. It is also about how your products can last. It's a little bit linked to durability in terms of um, they hope, the customers always hope your product requires less maintenance or less repair. They can use it without uh, spending much money into repair shops, but definitely serviceability can be a warranty. So when you buy a product, you, you may consider asking, like, like if you buy a Nike shoe, Adidas shoe, you are always capable, I think you always want, you have the desire to ask the shopkeepers whether you have some kind of a seven days or 10 days return or even um, one or even two ways kind of a warranty. So if your shoes break down during this period, you are able to get a repair, you're able to kind of a, um, you are able to get new shoes from that. And for some technological devices like iWatch, like AirPod, like um, um, breath, like I'll show you some example, like a calculator right here, like a calculator, there's often some kind of a warranty program that allows you to fix, also clock um, watches as well. They allow you to fix and have a free repair uh, within one year. So this is a way to gain customer loyalty and gain sales. It really depends. So for some products, the warranty is kind of a requirement. So like if you buy your shoes, you always want to have a seven days return because when you are trying out the shoes in the shop, you may feel good, but you haven't used this shoe in some in such as hiking. You have you you haven't applied these shoes in soccer games. Like if you buy a soccer boot, you haven't. Although you may spend the money to buy it. But 
but you are you are not sure whether you'll break down after I play a real soccer game in the uh, grass in the mud. So sometimes you always want to confirm with the keeper, with the employees, whether there's a possible return, a possible free repair or free kind of a return of, um, new shoes policy. Uh, and only if they have, you might be able to buy. So in these circumstances, it is a requirement to have a certain serviceability kind of a promise. But in certain other circumstances, like what maybe you are not, or maybe you just you never want to even ask, you don't even want to bother why warranty, why um whether they have a warranty or not. But in most for most companies like a Casio, Rolex, even if they are cheaper watch like Casio, maybe about a hundred dollars, maybe Rolex can run over one thousand, two thousand, sing dollars. But at the end, it really um basically this has already become a common sense among these companies. It's a way to gain customer loyalty and sales because they know they they know warranty is definitely important so serviceability is kind of I would say 80% is a requirement if you're selling a legitimate product and then it's aesthetics aesthetics you may have learned about it you may have taught about this concept on um, back in your um, design class back in your um, art visual art class back in your ICT class back in your computer applications class so service I'm um, sorry so asset is basically the look and feel look or touch of the product it can be subjective sometimes you know the styles of a bag like a LV bag some people like it some people don't some sometimes you can um, sometimes an ugly product which you may perceive it as ugly may run to millions of dollars of prices in the market someone really want to buy it same for Gucci Supreme sometimes for Supreme the shirt is really monotonous there's only a kind of box logo saying Supreme uh, is a red um, hoodie, but the price has rise to thousands of dollars in the US and around the world online because some people do like it. So basically, aesthetics can be subjective, but basically the feel, look, touch, as a manager or as a um, coordinator of a production, you have to try to improve this and you should conduct some market research prior to producing so you know whether the customer will like, whether the large proportion of customers will be able to like your product they will like your product they will be willing to buy because although judgment may differ between customers i may like this gucci you may not like this gucci shoes but for product you try to increase the probability of more customers liking your product once you publish it into the market so market research or observations is definitely really important so for market research, if you want to know more, I might um, do a video on marketing. So I will d discuss about qualitative, quantitative research and observations or survey or the different research that you can do prior to making a product. So marketing is definitely a key, but it's not really covered in supply chain management. But just keep in mind, only with marketing, with market research, you are able to improve your product. You're able to make a product that customers are likely to like, and then you're going to produce a product that you're going to market. That means you can get sales through different marketing strategies. So that is important uh, in terms of uh, total revenues and profits. But in supply chain management, we're basically trying to optimize our management of resources processes and participants it is both a technical subject but it's supply chain management is also a managerial strategical subject so uh, so we're not going through marketing in great detail in this course lastly it's about the perceived quality so this can be some uh, this can be brand image can be customer loyalty and it can be the status of a company for example if apple produced a new iphone i'm not even going to maybe um look really carefully in terms of the durability and so because i'm already sure that apple does produce the products that meet the standards because apple is kind of a popular company and it's uh, its products are really popular and liked by many people around the world so sometimes you know some big companies these multinational corporations actually get the advantage they get more sales because people sometimes don't even test the dimensions of quality but they just think oh this uh, this is a product by apple this is a product by microsoft this is a product by tencent so i'm sure they are good because they are they have been successful in experiences in the past so definitely brand image is the way but if you are small businesses you still you still want to sell your product as well right so you try to boost your customer loyalty this is even important not only for big brand like Huawei, Apple, it can just be products such as a tissue. It can just simply be a product like a tissue, it can be a product like a notebook. Because after consumer buy your product for the first time and they found out your product is really good in quality, this is customer loyalty. It doesn't have necessarily to be Apple around the world, that it's already in a really popular um, state, but if your product is able to uh, um, gain customer loyalty by the feeling that your product is really cost effective, your product is worth buying, your product is functional in their lives, then you are, you are actually gaining sales as you um, produce more of your products 
because they may recommend to their friends, they may repetitively buy your products or buy other products in your company because they believe in your company to be reliable and dependable. So definitely you should try to build brand images and status. And here I want to clarify a really important point is that many businesses don't willing to increase their quality to build their brand images. Actually, perceived quality comes from the first seven dimensions because how people see your brand image, whether there's a customer loyalty exists in your company, exists in your products, really depends on whether your product's qualities meet the standards and customers are satisfied or kind of happy with your product quality. So sometimes, although the managers sometimes they may unre are reluctant to put cost into improving the quality because they don't see some short-term catch inflow or short-term benefits. But if actually, if they spend more money in the quality, they're actually earning more sales in the long run. So, um, so managers, whether you are a manager or you are guiding someone who is a manager or you are working for a manager, it's definitely important for you to understand that investments in the long run is really essential. It is crucial to invest in the long run in order because otherwise your products may only get short return. But if you invest in the long run, you can gradually build up your company, you can build up your popularity, and you may be able to kind of level up your business in the great extend if you invest in your long run to try to raise the quality of your products so that's about eight dimensions of quality now now we want to classify these eight dimensions into order qualifying uh, dimensions and order and order winning dimensions so I haven't feel the word yet really sorry for that so the comfort so the first four dimensions conformance performance reliability and durability are actually order qualifying um, dimensions what do i mean by that it is if the product doesn't meet the standard of conformance performance reliability and durability they might not even qualify for st um, stable sales in the market that means maybe no one will buy the product maybe it's really low um, really low amount of customers will buy the product and the last four dimensions features of usability aesthetics and perceived quality are actually order winning dimensions so if your product is able to reach the standard given by these four dimensions your product is going to win your products have a higher chance to win more sales in the market compared to those who only have the four um, stated above so conformance performance reliability and durability are order con uh, order qualifying uh, dimensions and these four are order winning so I think it is quite straightforward because sometimes some extra features are not necessary for customers to like your product, but it really depends how you um how you kind of uh, uh, define features. So if take a phone for example, if curved phone is a feature, then I would say um it is really about order winning. It's um for example, if I have a Huawei, I have an iPhone, I don't have a curved screen right now because now 2020 curved screen is, not st is still not really popular in civilians for our normal consumers. So if I have this kind of a phone, it is already, it can be popular if the Huawei sell this phone, if iPhone sell this phone. But um, if the Samsung, for example, they have kind of developed a curved smartphone, Huawei also did it basically. So they develop this curved phone. Basically, they can open up this into two, and this this may become popular in the future. But now it is considered as a feature. You may win orders for the company. You may win certain orders, but it's not going to be pop. It's not really an order qualifying. It is not really an order winning feature as well. So feature can be order winning or not depending on the time. So I hope you guys understand it. Like the curved phone is not really popular right now. Maybe some people buy it, but most people still consider to buy this normal kind of a normal phone we use. Now, how about internal efforts for quality improvement? So the goal is to eliminate both internal and external quality failures. So now, um, I think um, we have went through a bit of internal cost and external cost in our last lecture on learning capability. So internal costs are basically the cost incurred in rework, in repair, in scrapping. Um, this is basically an internal cost, maybe a remanufacturing the products. External costs are really severe, and they can be fatal. This is, of course, after this is of course an inter after the product is published in the market so the um, cost can easily be returned or repaired this is okay like if i bought a nike i return the shoes um, and i want the nike to return me a new pair of shoes that is considered the external short-term cost but long-term cost is really scary it is about customer loyalty reputation customers perception future sales disruption so if some company experiences some sort of a long-term some sort of um some sort of a uh, long-term external cars they might they might have a drastic drop in the sales because of, um, that means the product is actually failing 
in the market so that is really scary so basically internal cost is better than external cost so you always try to eliminate your external cost you either you may try it in the uh, you may when you are still not publishing your product yet to the market you might try to um, re-examine your product test your product learn your product learn the root causes identify if there's any problems in your learning process and do single loop double loop learning to examine whether your product have some loopholes that you have to fix otherwise it can experience long-term quality failure once um, it is published the market and if it's long term which means many products have this problem and the problem is not caused by customer itself it may be highly costly so this is about long term and this is about internal and external quality failure so this is a graph here I haven't drawn for you so actually I just want to uh, emphasize the point that external failure is definitely external quality failure is definitely much more costly compared to internal cost failure so basically the graph will look at a uh, like a um, the graph will look like not a linear graph but um i, I know i would kind of a uh, sketch for you it is like this it's basically like this you will grow kind of slowly you will have a less area under the curve and then you'll rise very fast you'll rise kind of a uh, expect exponentially because then your sales may deteriorate in every region that you are selling this product to maybe in asia maybe in america maybe in africa depends on where you sell to product to so external cost much more costly than the quality cost Okay, so this is the part one of our quality management. So we simply discuss about eight dimensions of quality, and then we discuss about what are internal and external quality failures. So in part two of this lecture four, we'll focus on quality management, improvement dynamic, and how do we do this kind of a quality learning. I will be going through quality learning. In, it is a bit technical, but it's more like a logical process I want you guys to understand. I'm not going too technical here. I'm not teaching a technical SEM course. But I'm going to give you the logic in how do you test a product and how can you identify the errors in the quality of your product. So stay tuned and um, I will catch you up in the part two of a uh, quality management of our lecture form. Okay, see you next time.